Brooke Schofield, one half of the hugely popular cancelled podcast with Tanner Mojo, has recently been exposed for some old incriminating tweets that are in very poor taste, and most of all, pretty darn racist and hateful. Now when this whole thing became news, you were most likely thinking, as well as me, and probably the rest of the world, who? Who is this girl and why is this newsworthy in the slightest? I mean, I've never heard of her. As it turns out, my initial assumption of her being somewhat related to Philip Schofield was COMPLETELY INCORRECT! So for my American audience, Philip Schofield was a TV presenter who enjoyed the presence of children a little bit too much, so to speak. Do you want me to die? But heavens to Betsy, they aren't related at all, they just happen to have the same strange surname. As it turns out, she's actually a part of the cancelled podcast with Tana Mojo, which I have seen bits and pieces of, so I guess, in a roundabout way, I do know who she is. And now I've just managed to put a name to the face. By the way guys, before we move on, be sure to subscribe to the channel, I got a comment the other day saying that they were un subscribe from the channel and we can't be having any of that bollocks so get on that baby now this might be a bit controversial or at the very least not exactly what you might expect from me but i actually from the little bits of the cancelled podcast that i've seen find these two hosts to be like genuinely quite funny like i have laughed genuinely at a lot of their clips i am slightly embarrassed to say that i honestly find tana mojo to be kind of hilarious. <laughs> and like, not in the sense that I'm laughing at her, like, I think that her jokes are fucking really good sometimes. <laughs> but that's not to say I like the two of them as people, because they have engaged in numerous amounts of problematic behaviour in the past. Specifically Tana Mojo, but hers is a lot more infamous. Like, everyone knows about her shite. On screen now are a bunch of her racist tweets that she got done for a few years back. And now the exact same thing is happening to the co-host of the podcast, and my main question was, why are you even surprised? Because because, like, to be that associated with someone who is that seedy and that dodgy, you know, it's not that much of a shock that you have some skeletons in your closet as well. Funnily enough, the exact same thing could be said for Cody Ko, who hung around with a lot of people with terrible pasts and... I mean, look what happened to him. And to further thicken the story, that was also related to the cancelled podcast because it was Tana Mojo who was victim to him. These two seem to be magnets for controversy, and when you watch five seconds of any of their content, it's very easy to see why as well. Now, this video is mainly going to be focused on the apologies that Brooke Schofield made because those are by far the funniest part of this whole situation, but I do think that it's important that we do go through some of the tweets that, you know, started this whole thing to begin with. But I think, personally, it'd be a little bit boring to just read them out plainly like Illuminati did. So I've devised a fun wee game that I like to call reciting the top 10 most offensive Brooke Schofield moments. Coming in at number 10 we have I said so many accidentally racist things last night I don't know how I even made it back to America. Now believe it or not as shit as this joke is it's probably the funniest out of the tweets that we're about to read out. Which is why it takes number 10 because it has the most credibility as a joke despite it probably not being one. <laughs> For our ninth spot we have to rape you or not to you. Every day, struggle. The disabled cat I watch every day passed away. Out of respect for the poor cat, I didn't want to put this one in number 10, but this is just a shit joke. <laughs> like, I couldn't even begin to tell you what the joke is even meant to be here. Like, is she talking about doing that to the cat? What's funny about that? Was bestiality the pinnacle of comedy in 2012? At number 8, we have you can't trade lap dances for cheeseburgers because after a while, no one will want a lap dance from a fat person. I kind of regret saying earlier that I actually find these girls to be humorous at points because these jokes are such wank. The reason this one's at number 8 is because of the cute burger emoji, which I think adds a nice bit of colour to what is otherwise a very beige and awful vibe. Sorry, there was a fly on my leg I had to kill. I would retake that, but in the spirit of making choices that we regret, I'll, I'll leave it in. At number 7 we have, oh I see, I'm gonna go later because I get all embarrassed when I work out like a fat girl. Now this joke is equally as shit as the last one, but this time, there is no cute burger emoji, so we've placed it at number 7. At number 5, we have I gotta do this gay ass project, but eat some cornbread for me. Scope out the hot boy employees for me. Using gay as an insult wasn't really that uncommon in 2013, so I actually don't consider this one to be too incriminating, especially when you consider what most creators nowadays were tweeting back then. However, the inconsistent use of the full stop, which is used at the end of the first sentence, but not at the end of the second, really irks me, so this one makes number 5, even though cornbread is fucking delicious. Cassie yells racist profanities in the movie theatre. Only minority in the room is sitting directly behind us. This is 2015, she's a little bit older in this one, so it makes the 
shittiness of the joke a bit more, uh, I guess, unforgivable. So this one makes number three or four. I don't fucking know at this point. Okay, it was it was number five. I've just read ahead. The real number four spot is a bloody brilliant tweet called I sure wish I didn't have to dress like a D slur for work. The only reason this isn't higher on the list is because she's doing a job. You know, she's contributing to society in some way, shape or form, even if she's being a dick about it. These next two spots on the list, I like to call the F word saga. At number three, we have the famous quick courting me when you're drunk meatball i don't even want you when you're sober once again this was 2012 everyone was using that language it is an unfortunate truth everyone was using this sort of language well on the internet at least it was very common in that sort of edgy subsector of the internet however it is just a bit rude so it's number three number two swoops onto the list with i you can tweet you can answer your phone f word i had a question which is just as bad as the last tweet but the grammar makes no sense i you can tweet you can answer your phone it's just ridiculous it sounds dumb it hurts to say so it's number two. And then at number one, by far the worst tweet that she has ever made in her entire life. And one that I can't really make jokes about. Guarantee if Zimmerman shot a white guy, this wouldn't even be a story. Newsflash, this wasn't a crime of racism, it was self-defense. Now I'm aware that some of my audience might not know the situation that she is referring to in this tweet, but it was huge at the time. Now if you want the full scope of just how bad this tweet is, I'd recommend looking into it yourself because I don't want this video to be about that, but long story short, it was a hate crime. A bloke called George Zimmerman shot a 17-year-old African-American known as Trayvon Martin in what was undoubtedly a racially provoked attack, to which Martin sadly ended up dying. And this tweet is basically implying that the attack had nothing to do with race and that it's only a big deal because Trayvon Martin was black. Needless to say, this is an extremely ignorant view on things. And for those saying that Brooke was only 17, 18 when she made these tweets, first of all, for some of them, she was a full 20 years old, so she was an adult. And secondly, the cancelled podcast was having full on beef with an 18 year old called Alabama Barker just like a mere few months ago. I personally didn't see anybody running to the defense of her because of her age of 18 years old. Everyone was more than happy for her to get hatred. People didn't like her. And I'm not even saying it's wrong to tell an 18 year old when they're acting like a dick. I just think that you should keep the mentality consistent with both of those people, right? All right, now that we've finished all of that, we can finally look at apology number one because there are four of them. <laughs> I do appreciate the people who are coming to bat for me and like saying like, you know, it was so long ago and like she's grown and stuff, but like it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't fucking matter. Like it literally does not matter. They are horrible. I want to talk about particularly the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman situation. That is the one that she needs to address, by the way, because all of the other ones, and I genuinely mean this, and I don't really care if this seems like a controversial or ignorant thing to say, none of the other ones are really that bad considering what everybody else was saying at the time. Obviously, it's very easy to now look at those other tweets and think, what a prick. I can't believe you'd say something like that. But the most popular fucking traitors on the website were using terminology way worse than that every day. So it really, honestly, isn't that bad. The Trayvon Martin one is by far the one that needs to be addressed the most. Set at the time, because I have seen like some comments today that are like, well, no shit, she's racist, like white Nepo baby, like a little like spoiled brat, like, and that was not my situation. And my parents were addicts, so I was adopted by my grandparents when I was like 10, and I grew up with them from that point on. And as is true for a lot of grandparents, they're a little bit less progressive than a lot of us are now. And my grandma has dementia, so it was really just like me and my grandpa. And he is a very, very right-wing conservative man, okay? It was like my household was literally just Fox News all the time. Right, so this isn't really an apology. Maybe 30 seconds of this four minute video is actually saying I'm sorry, and the rest is just explaining why it isn't really her fault and blaming other people for the fuck up that she did, right? And that's not to say that there is no validity in the story that she is telling. I think it's really annoying when YouTubers try to explain why their head was in a certain space and people just write it off as an excuse. When it's not really an excuse, it's them trying to help you understand where their head was at. I think it would have been very beneficial for her to stress that even though she was in that situation, I think it would have been very beneficial for her to stress that even though external factors may have, uh, I guess, affected her mindset to some extent, that that in and of itself is not an excuse for her actions, if you know what I mean. It doesn't really seem as though she actually took any of the blame head on here, which is very disappointing to see.
see. But what the fuck were you expecting from one of the hosts of Cancelled? Like, I'm being totally serious here. These two are not the peak of emotional maturity by any means. They're not the peak of maturity by any means. Like, if you actually expected for her to hit all the perfect notes in her apology and come off as extremely genuine and win back everyone's love and trust... You're, you're a, a fucking idiot! idiot. <laughs> if we are to take our word for it, though, and say the story is true and that she actually did grow up with, you know, close family constantly telling her and barraging her with their opinions that are, you know, not as progressive as many people may have liked, then I do think that the people who are blaming it all on her and saying that that had no effect on her opinions are equally as annoying as the ones who are just accepting her apology when they have no place to do that. When you're growing up in those extremely formative years with the people closest to you that you trust the most constantly telling you that this is the way to think, you will grow up thinking it of as- you will grow up thinking that it is some sort of fact. If this was a proper apology where she did everything right, I feel like that story still would have made it in some way somehow? But it wouldn't have been the main talking point like it is here. Like it, like, it just comes across as a deflection here. And you can't seriously expect anybody to forgive you based on this. I feel like a lot of people, when they apologize, sort of feel like the necessity is to accept it when... Accepting the apology is completely optional, dude. It's also extremely interesting to note that the comments are flooded with a bunch of... I'll just say it, white people saying that they accept her apology. When none of the tweets that she really said apply to them, like, at all. Unless they're gay, I suppose. Like this girl, for example, saying, We could never hate you. Of course you can't. Look at yourself! <laughs> anyway, because this apology was so bad, she actually released an apology for her apology. <laughs> First and obviously most important thing is that I'm so sorry, specifically to black people and the other people of color who were offended by my tweets, okay? Because obviously I'm seeing a lot of like positivity in the comments and people saying that they forgive me and it's all white people. And that's how I know I did not address this properly at all. So I want to be clear that this is directed specifically to black people and other people of color. Right, so this one here definitely seems a lot more genuine. People in the comments are criticizing her for jump cutting so that she can read off of some type of script or at least some notes that she has written down. I personally have never found that to be a valid criticism. I think that in a situation of this scale, when this many people are angry at you, it's perfectly reasonable to read off of notes or even a script, right? Because you want to get things right. I understand that to some it makes it seem a little bit less genuine, but I suppose it's just a matter of opinion at the end of the day. The way that I was tweeting and the things that I was saying online at that time. And I know that there's no apology beyond like reparations that can mend that wound. I like where she's going with that because reparations are the best way to go. You can turn this situation, which is one that is harming the people of color in your audience who may have grown to trust you and feel a bit betrayed when they see these sort of tweets in your past. I'm not saying that you can turn it into a positive situation, but you can turn it into as much of a positive situation as you can by donating to certain charities or making the reparations that you're talking about. I don't care if I was a teenager, I was old enough to know better. And not only did I choose to say those things, I chose to say those things on a public platform. And I am very, very ashamed of it. Especially sorry to those who were affected in real time because keep in mind, I had friends and family who were following me at that time and would have been hurt by those tweets. And I feel sick over that. The tweets were racist, okay? There's no getting around that. They cannot be dismissed as jokes or political opinions or anything else. They it was racism. This is also a big improvement from the first apology, right? She's actually addressing directly what she's done wrong and not tiptoeing around the subject of racism, right? Which is what it is. I will say that there there is a big issue insofar as this being the, the second apology, right? It's like when Logan Paul did the forest thing and then his, uh, his first apology was pish. Like, it was so... It was one of the worst apologies on YouTube. And that is... That's saying something, for sure. And even though the second apology did seem a lot more genuine, the fact that the first one was so shit really soured the second one because it makes it seem a lot more like damage control. The fact of the matter is nobody forced me to tweet those things. I tweeted those things on my own, and the blame is on me. The conscious choice to not learn about politics until I was a young adult. But that did not stop me from tweeting political opinions. I wanted to appear that I knew more than I did and that I was educated and instead I was spreading harmful, very, very harmful misinformation. I had all the educational resources available to me to learn what was right and I chose not to. 
However, the murder of Trayvon Martin has nothing to do with politics, okay? The murder of Trayvon Martin was a hate crime. I mean, I'll say it again. This seems like a really genuine apology. I don't see anything wrong with this one. If this was the first one, I would have just taken it at face value and thought, yeah, it was 10 years ago, she's grown as a person, and it's not, you know, an unforgivable sin that she's committed. So let's just hope that she makes the correct reparations and, you know, she can move on with her career. A lot of the people of color in her audience will choose to forgive her, which is fine. You know, they can do that if they want. And a lot of the people of color in her audience won't forgive her, which is fine as well. It's your choice if you want to forgive her. The murder of George Floyd shifted my mindset completely, okay? Because that's when I started to really research and learn what it was like and what it looked like to be anti-racist. I started to seek out my own resources and learn what reparations looked like and learn what I could do as a white person in situations like these. And I'm really, truly ashamed that it took me that long. I'm really glad she didn't take the route of like, oh, what can I do to help you, people of color who may be watching this video? Because I fucking hate when virtue signaling bastards reach out to minorities in their videos and go, oh, look at this big problem that you're having. What can I do to help? Because I, I really want to help, guys, so just tell me what I can do. It's like, don't burden them with the responsibility of having to tell you what to do. Fucking figure it out for yourself, you bitch. There's so much information on the internet. Like she said correctly, it's all out there. Like, just read a fucking book or something. I know there are a lot of people like me who are still working to unlearn the inherent racism that we possess, still. While I know that I've changed, I also know that there is a lot of work to be done, okay? There is a lot that I could still do that I have not done yet. I promise you that I will. I have been and will continue to look into reparation initiatives to share with you guys, as well as figure out ways that we can give black creators more visibility because we know that's a major problem in this space. I want to do everything that I can to show you that I am not the person that I was in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. I am not. I understand that there are people who are never going to forgive me and I do not fault you for that at all. That me like, at all. But I truly am so sorry. I am sorry for the words that I said. I am sorry for my racist past. I am sorry for the people that I hurt. And I want to do everything I can to earn back your trust because it really is very important to me. I really wasn't expecting to agree with so much of what she was saying in this video. I thought this would be like a pure hate piece, but I think She's spitting a lot of facts. It's very easy for people who are raised with more of an accepting and, you know, I guess kind mindset to not know what it's like to be a dickhead, right? So when other people come out of the woodwork raised in horrendously racist environments and, you know, pick up on some of those mentalities, there's a significant portion of people who are already enlightened that are just unwilling to accept that someone who was racist at some point in their life is unable to grow and learn or change from it, right? They are destined to be racist forever. When now, nah, if a 17 year old makes a really shit and horrible and disgusting racist tweet, they, as a 27 year old, absolutely absolutely could have grown out of that mindset. And it is Brooke Schofield's responsibility as a public creator of her scale to address that tweet and completely condemn her past actions in the most public forum possible, which is, I guess, TikTok. I really do think that if you got rid of the first apology and it was just this one that came out, she couldn't have addressed the situation better. Now, don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of negatives here because one, we don't actually know how genuine she's being, right? Because creators are very meticulous with what they put out. What you see is only usually what they want you to see unless they fuck up and make an editing error or something. So don't misconstrue me. I have absolutely no way of knowing how real she is actually being here. And obviously in an ideal world there would be no need for an apology because she shouldn't have done the fucking shit tweet in the first place, right? That's fair as well to say. And I think it's equally as fair to say that someone who has been that racist previously in the past does not deserve to have the platform that they have, right? They can live a life, they can have a job, they can be happy or whatever, but they don't deserve to have a platform of this scale, right? That's a completely understandable mentality to have as well. It's not one that I personally agree with. I won't criticize someone for thinking that. There are certain things like actual crimes where no matter how much time has passed, yeah, don't come back to the internet. You don't deserve a platform. People like EDP, for example. But a disgustingly opinionated tweet from 10 years ago, I do think is forgivable. However, to make it absolutely clear, I don't know if you've noticed, I'm not black 
And uh, you might not believe this, but I'm actually not gay either. I'm not even half gay. So whether or not I choose to forgive her is completely irrelevant, and I have no right to tell the people who those words have affected how to feel. I think it would be extremely ignorant and shitty of me to come into this video with a, a unionist and conjoined opinion like, we need to think this, you need to think that, and we all should come together and have a group hug and forgive this wee girl. I've spoken for way too long. The story's not over. There's two more apologies to get through. After the first apology came out, Brooke Schofield liked a Instagram post featuring Donald Trump, and that just started the whole thing over again. I do not think that Brooke's apology was sincere at all, and I do not think she was sorry, because this was posted one hour ago, and Brooke Schofield has liked it. Here's it zoomed in so that you can see. Why would you like a photo of a man who is making it his mission to give police officers who unalive innocent black people immunity from being prosecuted for their murder? Like, how can you say you have unlearned these behaviors? You're not that person anymore, but you're actively supporting a man who wants to take away rights and further harm the black community that he does not like, in my opinion. Like, the timing of this is actually insane. I cannot wrap my brain around this. This was a terrible, terrible move. So there you go. I mean, this was equally as huge. People are saying, oh, she liked an Instagram post with Donald Trump in it. She must support Trump and Trump hates black people. So the apology was bullshit. And I understand that mentality for sure. But you know what? Before I say anything, we'll watch our response. I know how stupid it looks that I liked that post today. And I literally want to kick myself in the fucking face for it. But it was like mindless. I literally was on an airplane scrolling. I saw the last person in the entire world that I would think would be in the room with Trump, with Trump. So I was like, this is crazy. And I liked the post. Worst timing ever. So fucking stupid. Not a Trump supporter. Okay, period. I am not a Trump supporter. I believe her, personally. I really do believe her. Because even if she was a Trump supporter, who the fuck would be so dumb to look at a picture of Trump and think, yeah, I'm gonna like that, and everyone's gonna see that I've liked that, even though I've posted these apologies that I've put insane amounts of effort into, I'm just gonna reverse everything by liking this picture publicly. No one on earth is that fucking dumb. So I genuinely do believe it was a spur of the moment, oh, Aiden Ross is with Trump, I'll like that move on, right? I genuinely believe that. It's not fact, again, I could be wrong, who knows, maybe she is just that fucking dumb. Now, I don't mean to get too political, because this is not a politics channel, but I think that people who are criticizing her for this tend to be way too quick to defend Kamala Harris like she's some fucking saint when she definitely is not. And yes, that includes how she treats the black community. For those who don't know, Kamala Harris was an attorney general and also a former prosecutor. And to put it lightly, she was overly punitive and did not address systemic issues in the justice system. She definitely claims to support some reforms, but her past actions in law are not as progressive as a lot of people think that she is. And some of those stances have all of a sudden shifted very quickly, which is leading many, including me, to question the genuine commitment to the reforms that she is promising to make. Whether or not she or Trump will be better for the black community in America is not as simple as a lot of people are making it out to be. It just isn't. In fact, before COVID under Trump's presidency, Unemployment for black people was at a historic low. And that's not me supporting Trump's treatment of the black community. I think his treatment of the whole George Floyd situation and the Black Lives Matter movement was fucking nothing short of disgusting, right? It was grim. And his attempts to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which would absolutely disproportionately affect black Americans, was equally as grim. Kamala Harris definitely does seem to be more of an advocate for affordable health care. And just in general, her presence as a black South Asian woman will undoubtedly help the image of America. Her presence in a high office would absolutely represent a step in the right direction for representation and could inspire a lot of young black Americans. I don't know how many people I've just lost from that little spiel there, but all I'm trying to say is that it's not as black and white as many people are making it out to be. Anyway, moving on swiftly, her fourth apology. This one is responding to the pressure for her to donate to the Trayvon Martin Foundation, which I think is a completely fair ask. Like I said, I think reparations are more important than apologies. So I have already donated to the Trayvon Martin Foundation. Literally the first thing I did. And I'm doing my research, I'm looking into other communities and foundations that I can help with, and I will continue to do that. Like I said, in any way that I can help, I will help. 
Short, to the point, sweet, simple, right? I think that's good. I don't know what else I can say about that. I think that's good. Even if she's doing it out of ill intentions or just to save herself, 10,000 grand has been donated to the Trayvon Martin Foundation, which is a good thing. But of course, the story doesn't end there. Everyone still has an endless amount of complaints to give to this woman. Why are you friends with a Zionist? And why were you silent and didn't even head nod when Tana mentioned Palestine on cancelled? See, this shit is just like, come on. You don't need to criticize every little aspect of her life and every little body movement that she makes just fucking at some point just fucking leave people alone man if i was on a podcast and someone was talking about palestine i wouldn't feel the need to make it a back and forth conversation for it to be effective and you've also got tiktoks like this one where they're saying if brooke schofield actually wanted to apologize she could help support the foundation built in trayvon martin's name which as we've established she has already donated ten thousand dollars someone pointed this out in the comments to which the creator responded do we actually have proof of this or just her words after the tour the cancelled podcast went on 10k is nothing so to reiterate you've made a video saying that if she cared she would donate money to the Trayvon Martin Foundation so then she donated money to the Trayvon Martin Foundation and you're still not happy. There's nothing wrong with not forgiving her, like I said, you can do what you want, but I think there is something wrong with being so headstrong on a mindset that you're unwilling to change from it no matter what happens. And if she ever does something good, you'll move the goalpost as much as you can to make it seem like a bad thing. Although to be fair, they are right, I don't think there is any proof of the 10k being donated. I personally believe her, but who knows, right? And once again, I'm not a part of any of the minority groups that she mentioned, so I don't have the right to tell anybody how to feel. I'm just giving my opinion on the situation, which I can do. I think that's about it for this video, though. I think overall I've been a... a honestly, I think I was a bit too nice to... <laughs> to Brooke in this video. I think I might have given her a bit too much credit and believed her being genuine a wee bit too much as well. Just knowing the internet and how it works and the influencers and the cancelled podcast, she probably isn't being as sincere as she makes out to be. So maybe I'm really just hoping for the best and hoping that she is as good a person as she possibly could be. But who knows? At the end of the day, I've given my opinion in this video. You can draw your own conclusions from that if you wish. For now though, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Big shout out to Grace, Kitson and Riley for being patrons. If you want to donate to the Patreon, for two quid, you get early access to all the videos, your name at the end of the video, and also a place in the patron-only Discord. I think that's it for now, though, so I'll catch you later. Bye.